Happy everybody, my name is Brandon Rosa and welcome to episode 74 of the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. Every Monday this podcast covers new game releases, the previous week's gaming news, and we all are in an Xbox related fun fact together. This show is on YouTube and podcast services around the world, so please subscribe in your favorite and leave a review. Xboxin10.com, no numbers, is your quick source for links to all of our podcast destinations and social media profiles, which you can follow at Xboxin10. To start, let's talk game releases. The big games out last week include Pumpkin Jack, Transformers Battlegrounds, and Monster Truck Championship. The games coming out this week include Case 2 Animatronic Survival, Visage, Axes, Sweet Witches, NHL 94 Rewind, Legends of Eternal, The Dark Pictures Little Hope, Grim Fandango Remastered, Full Auto Remastered, and Day of the Tentacle Remastered, also all on Game Pass, Juan Juan Sword 7, Watch Dogs Legion, Pacer, Cobra Kai The Karate Kid Saga Continues, The Blue Coats North vs. South, Cardo, and Ghost Runner. Now with last week's biggest news stories and we have 6 to cover this week. Number 1, Xbox lead Phil Spencer talks Xbox Game Pass Platinum and Xbox TV streaming sticks. Jez Corden at Windows Central writes, In a recent interview via The Verge with Straight Cherry, Xbox lead Phil Spencer offered some hints about where Xbox Game Pass and Project X Cloud, Xbox Game Streaming, could head in the future. The interview with Straight Cherry is paywalled, but The Verge extracted some interesting quotes about Spencer's thoughts on what the future could hold. Quote, I think you're going to see lower priced hardware as part of our ecosystem when you think about streaming sticks and other things that somebody might want to just go plug in their TV and go play via xCloud. You can imagine us even having something that we just included in the Game Pass subscription that gives you an ability to stream xCloud games to your television and buying the controller. Brad Sams of Throughout.com previously revealed that Microsoft was experimenting with a Chromecast-like TV dongle dubbed Project Hobart. In the interview with Straight Cherry, Phil Spencer also reportedly mentions the possibility of an Xbox Game Pass Platinum tier that would come with free hardware similar in design to Xbox All Access. I think this is really exciting as it would open up your house to play Xbox wherever you wanted. I think it's very smart and the lower the price point, the more appealing it will be. Put this at like $50 or maybe $100 with the controller and fulfill all your first party Xbox Game Studios desires as well as the third parties on Game Pass. Number 2. Xbox could recoup 7.5 billion Bethesda purchase without putting games on PlayStation, says Phil Spencer. Andy Chalk at PC Gamer writes, One of the big questions that arose in the immediate aftermath of Microsoft's acquisition of Bethesda, number 3 in our top 5, was whether the studio's future games would be released on PlayStation platforms. Keeping Fallout 5 or The Elder Scrolls 6 off of Sony consoles would mean a lot of lost game sales, but it could also have a major impact on Microsoft's bigger plans. If you love Bethesda's open world RPGs and they're available only on Xbox, it's probably going to be a factor when it comes to the time to decide where you're going to spend your money. In an interview with Kotaku, Xbox boss Phil Spencer didn't say that Microsoft would make future Bethesda games console exclusives on the Xbox, but he did emphasize that it could. When asked if the company would be able to recoup the $7.5 billion it spent on the acquisition without selling Elder Scrolls 6 on PlayStation consoles, Spencer flat out said yes. Quote, I don't want to be flip about that, he continued. This deal was not done to take games away from another player base like that. Nowhere in the documentation that we put together was, how do we keep other players from playing these games? We want more people to be able to play games, not fewer people to be able to go play games, end quote. Quote, but I'll say in the model, I'm just answering directly the question that you had. When I think about where people are going to be playing and the number of devices that we had, and we have xCloud and PC and Game Pass, and our console base, I don't have to ship those games on any other platform other than the platforms that we support, in order to kind of make the deal work for us, whatever that means, end quote. At this point, and with this story and the quotes from Phil Spencer, I do believe that Bethesda games will become console exclusives going forward. They paid a lot of money for this deal, and they need to be an enticing offer for you to come over to the Xbox ecosystem and sign up for Xbox Game Pass. I think they understand that it's going to be bad press and people are going to be in an uproar. That's why they don't want to cloud the launch of the Xbox Series X and S right now by telling you that. It's going to be very interesting to see when Starfield hits and what consoles it will be on. Number 3. 10 more cloud gaming titles get Xbox Touch Control support with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Heidi Nicholas of True Achievements writes, The Xbox team has just announced that 10 more games will be available with Xbox Touch Controls for cloud gaming with Xbox Game Pass Ultimate starting today. In September, Microsoft launched Project xCloud in 22 countries for Android devices, and today's announcement marks the arrival of 10 more titles available with Xbox Touch Controls and Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Catherine Gluckstein at Xbox Wire adds that no controllers are needed, saying the team was pleased with their reaction to the touch controls in Minecraft Dungeons. 
Quote, as we bring cloud gaming to Android devices, we have continued to look at how we can create more native experience that you can jump right in and play. Touch controls have been one of the top requested features for cloud gaming, so to build this collection, we worked closely with the players and the game designers to create a familiar experience and support a level of play that you're used to with a physical controller, Gluckstein added. For each title that uses Xbox Touch controls, we work to create an experience designed specifically for that game on mobile devices, end quote. The games now featuring Xbox Touch controls are as listed on the Xbox site are Dead Cells, Guacamelee 2, Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, Hotshot Racing, Killer Instinct, New Super Lucky's Tale, Slay the Spire, Streets of Rage 4, Tell Me Why, and Undermine. Again, I want to encourage anyone with an Android device to give this a shot. Project X Cloud has certainly impressed me, I can't wait to see what the future holds on it. And I did play Minecraft Dungeons for a little bit with touch controls, and for that game, it certainly worked just fine. Number 4. Halo the Master Chief Collection to get a free 4K 120 frames per second upgrade on Xbox Series X, Xbox Series S. Adam Bankhurst at IGN writes, On November 17th, Halo the Master Chief Collection will become fully optimized on Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S, and will feature 120 frames per second in campaign and multiplayer, split-screen improvements, up to 4K on Xbox Series X, and more. Announced by Xbox on Twitter, this update will be available for free to existing owners or those who are subscribed to Xbox Game Pass. Aaron Greenberg, GM of Xbox Games Marketing at Microsoft, has also confirmed that Halo the Master Chief Collection will also support cross-gen play and adjustable field of view. These updates are another part of Halo the Master Chief Collection's future that will also include cross-play between Xbox One and PC, a custom game browser, PC file share, per-game graphics and audio options, mouse and keyboard support on Xbox One, and more. I cannot wait to play some of these older games in the full fidelity on the Xbox Series X with all the upgrades. However, it's extremely disappointing that they missed launch by a week. With the Halo Infinite delay, I'm not really sure how they messed that one up. Number 5. Gears 5 is getting story DLC and its Xbox Series X S update lets you recast Marcus Phoenix as Dave Bautista. Tom Ivan at Video Games Chronicle writes, Microsoft has announced a range of new content coming to Gears 5 beginning on November 10th when the game makes its next-gen debut. The Xbox Series X, S, Xbox One, and PC versions will all receive a new Game Plus mode in which Jack upgrades carry over. It will feature two additional difficulty modes, fresh weapon and character skins, plus new achievements. Meanwhile, the Xbox Series X and S versions will give players the options to recast Marcus Phoenix in the campaign as Batista, Dave Batista's WWE persona, using an optional cosmetic item complete with a new voiceover. Microsoft will support crossplay between all platforms and will run at 120 frames per second on the Series X and S. The Coalition will also release Gears 5 Story DLC titled Hive Busters for all platforms in December. In Gears 5 co-op, three-person Hive Buster squads purposely get themselves captured by the enemy in order to destroy Hive strongholds from within. Microsoft hasn't confirmed that the Story DLC will be free or paid content, but told IGN that it is estimated a playtime of around 3-4 to four hours. Thinking more about it and how much fun I had with Gears 5, this might actually be the first game that I try on my Series X at launch. Can't wait to see how good it looks and how good it feels to play on the Series X. And number 6, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War Zombie Onslaught Mode is a 12 month PlayStation exclusive. Matt Wales at Eurogamer writes, Activision has unveiled Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War's Cooperative Zombies Onslaught Mode, which, a new sure to send eyeballs a swiveling is confirmed to be a timed PlayStation exclusive that won't be heading to other platforms for a full year. Zombies Onslaught is separate to this year's main Zombies narrative, Die Machine, which is still coming to all platforms at launch and is described as a two-person, fast-paced co-op experience that drops participants complete with their custom loadouts onto one of several locations derived from Cold War's various multiplayer maps. The stickler, of course, is that Activision, working us alongside Sony, has elected to make this chunk of the overall Cold War experience exclusive to PS4 and PS5 for an entire year. A rather brazen move given the outcry that followed a similar decision in 2019 to restrict Call of Duty Bonner Warfare Spec Ops Survival Mode to PS4 for 12 months. I don't think it's any question that given this is an Xbox podcast, I'm extremely disappointed with Activision and Call of Duty on this again. It sucked last year not to have a special mode, but this one especially hurts given my love for the zombies mode. As always, we end our show with a fun fact about Xbox, and this one is about one of the Halo movies. Credit to Joe Scrubbles at IGN. In one of its many possible live-action incarnations, Halo is at one point set to become a movie directed by Guillermo del Toro. According to one of the original game's developers, the director was at one point pitching for an adaptation in which Master Chief had an evil twin that sided with the enemy faction, The Flood. 
Speaking on the latest episode of IGN's Devs React, a speedrun series centered on Halo Combat Evolved, environment artist and creator of Halo's title, Paul Russell brought up a mooted Del Toro script for a Halo movie and brought up a surprising plot detail. Quote, Master Chief had a twin brother and the twin brother sided with the Flood, and then at the end of the movie it was going to be the brother against brother, end quote. What a bizarre take and I can't imagine how this would have turned out, but I guess we can only look forward to the Showtime show and hope that that is good. Thank you all for listening to the Xbox in 10 podcast, your weekly source of Xbox gaming news covered in around 10 minutes. If you like the show, please subscribe to your favorite podcast service, share it with your friends, leave a review, and follow on all social media at Xbox in 10. This past week, I haven't had any time to play video games, which is really disappointing, but this week I'm hoping to carve out some time and play Star Wars Squadrons in VR and continue the campaign. My name is Brandon Rose. You can follow me on Xbox at Rose 93 I hope you all have a great week. Stay safe and keep on gaming.